Hey, hey, what's cracking? Welcome back to the HQ. It's your boy, Nicholas. Big Dog has got eat fantasy football, BDGE. You know the deal. We are moving our mock traps over to Friday for some unforeseen logistical complications. That's what I'm going to leave it at. We're going to be doing, like I said, Monday, Wednesday, Friday is going to be the video schedule. That's what I'm planning to do throughout the summer as well as Sunday uh, live streams. I might do some mock draft live streams on Sunday. I might do some just like Q and A's on Sunday on the live streams, but that looks like to be the schedule starting in June, <clears throat> at least for Sundays that I did not drink too much tequila the night before. That's the plan. That's the plan. So don't get mad at me if I don't get in there. Anyways, today we're going to do a mock draft on Yahoo because they just opened up their, their mock draft lobbies, uh, probably like two weeks ago, maybe. I haven't done a mock draft on here yet. So you were witnessing the first time I've done it on Yahoo. I really don't know what their rankings or their their ADPs are looking like. I'm sure they're going to be awful at this point. But I wanted to kind of switch it up, give you guys a little different view because Yahoo is my favorite platform when it comes to um, actually playing fantasy football, not doing the mock drafts because, again, their rankings and their ADPs are not good. But um, Yahoo is my favorite platform for just, you know, having your league hosted on here. And for you guys that do live drafts and are like worried about that, it's easy. You could just manually input all the players and stuff. So we're just waiting on the draft to start. Yahoo also changed their standard scoring. So not like actual like fantasy football standard scoring, but their regular scoring is now half point PPR. And rather than starting three wide receivers, they do a flex. So you can see the roster position right here. Um, and this is pretty optimal for regular fantasy football leagues if you don't do anything special. So half PPR, a flex instead of three wide receivers. So that's that's like kind of what I do in most of my leagues. Some of them I do two flexes. Some of them I do higher quarterback scoring. But that's, you know, general. I, I like where Yahoo's headed. Other uh, other announcements. What do we got on here? One, Pusha T is the GOAT. Sick, sick, sick. Two. National Donut Day is today. It's Friday right now. I'm filming this on Friday morning, June 1st. I'm about to go absolutely dominate National Donut Day. I have like a list of six different places I'm about to hit. I even have a huge donut hat I'm wearing. So next time you see me, it'll probably be with a big, fat, bloated face. That's what I'm talking about. Um, Yes, we have the my draft guide. If you guys uh, haven't pre-ordered that, do that now because price goes up on July 1st. Shooting to have it released either July 8th or July 9th, so stay tuned for that. It's going to be super duper sweet. You can check it out in the link below, the BDGE Ultimate Draft Guide for your fantasy football draft. Anyways, this is a 10-team mock draft. I am shooting from the number one spot. Number one overall. You know how it'd be. That's how you start your day right there. A little, a little poopy in your mouth. And we're going to, uh, yeah, I'm just going to fast forward until the draft actually starts, and, and then we'll get into it. Oh, you know what? Also, guys, for the uh, for the live draft weekend, which uh, is happening in August, right? I'm bringing nine of you guys out to have a live fantasy football draft with me to New York City. We're renting an Airbnb out. We're going to chill. We're going to hang out for the entire weekend. Uh, for those of you guys who reached out to me that are interested in it, uh, just know that the reason maybe I haven't got back, I sent you guys a video, I think, with an update about a week ago. But if you have not heard back from me, it's because uh, I've been you know, working on the process. The first thing I wanted to do was nail down the Airbnb. And fellers, we did that. Check this. Check this. She is out. Check out the Airbnb that I just snagged last night. This is it, y'all. For those y'all that are going to be staying in New York with us, we got a penthouse in Hell's Kitchen. This this is where we'll be at. Yo, like, let's go. I'm going to show you guys the absolute best time. This is going to be sick. Friday to Sunday with a fantasy football draft. Oh, wow. I didn't even see this little fucker right here. Look at that. That's creepy. That's creepy. I guess I'll take the L and sleep down there for whoever's in the house. Damn, this is going to be amazing. So that's the spot. We are going to be in the heart of New York City. He's going to be, it's going to be murder. All right, so this is loading again. I'll check back in with you guys when it's all done. Going to go refill my poop coffee.
All right, so we on the clock. And if you follow me at all, you know my number one player on the board is Le'Veon. Le'Veon. I haven't actually done any draft picks from the first spot yet. So Le'Veon over Gurley. Um, one, I just I, – I, the passing opportunity for Le'Veon is just out of control, the way he is involved in that passing game. And I had a stat on my Instagram, uh, which you can go follow. link will be in the description, where – Bell, over the last two years, Bell has averaged 5.9 receptions a game, so just around six. In the NFL, there have only been six players that have averaged more receptions per game over the last two years than Le'Veon, and they were all obviously receivers. It was like Antonio Brown, D-Hop, um, Odell Beckham. There's six guys. So pretty much when you draft Le'Veon, you're, you're getting a guy who gets 18 to 20 carries a game, plus rushing touchdowns, obviously, plus you're getting like a high wide receiver, too. You know, so I don't know. It, it, it's like Gurley was amazing last year, but there's a good chance his touchdown numbers go down a little bit. And Le'Veon's a guy that's never relied on touchdowns, right? He doesn't score those 15, 18, 20 touchdowns. He just gets it done through the yardage. So imagine Le'Veon this year just breaks out and goes for 18 touchdowns. He's going to run away with the fantasy scoring competition. Their offense is popping, as always. Um, their line should be very good. They're always one of the highest rated offensive lines in the league. Just love Le'Veon's setup here. So. Bell is my number one player. And uh, I'm not really too worried about him kind of holding out, you know, not coming to training camp. I know he started off slow last year, but even in those games, he was still getting 16, 18, 24 touches throughout like the first couple weeks when he was less efficient than he normally had been. So Le'Veon's a guy for me at number one. Obviously, I'm not going to argue with you if you want to take Gurley, if you want to take mm, – for me personally, I wouldn't go anywhere else besides Zeke or Gurley, but I know a lot of people are probably going to be high on David Johnson um, and Zeke. I probably wouldn't take either of those guys because David Johnson won. I don't know. That offense is just not – I would much rather a guy in Pittsburgh's offense or uh, the Rams' offense in, in Gurley and Bell than I would in that Cardinals' offense because who knows. What, I know he's going to be super involved, but so are Gurley and, and Bell, and they have the upside of being in those offenses. And then you have uh, Zeke, who's just not as involved in the passing game. So, all right, we're coming around pick 2021. 20, Ooh, see, I love drafting on Yahoo right now because I think you get steals where, as if you're in like a real money league, for the most part, ah, Devonta Adams just went off the board. You are not getting Dalvin Cook this late. You are not getting, actually, Gronk, this is about where Gronk is going off the board. And I'm very, very, very much okay taking Gronk at this turn here. So, right now, I'd be eyeing Cook, Devonta Freeman. Rob Gronkowski, probably. So two of those three would be nice. I'd even take LaShawn McCoy all the way down here. Ah, there goes Cook, damn. Zam. Who else? They probably got guys creeping all the way down here that shouldn't be too far down. <laughs> you got to get yourself acquainted with these things. That's why I suggest people do drafts all over the place. Okay, cool. So, um... <sighs> I like McCoy. Still going to be the guy there, but that offense is going to go to shit. I think the thing with McCoy is like, I, I think it's become popular to say that McCoy is obviously going to bust this year, and you're going to hear that a lot. Um, I'm going to take Gronk here just so we don't run out of time. Freeman's going to be my pick here. Okay, so um, yeah, you're going to hear McCoy is. A popular bus pick this year, and I get it, right? But he's falling pretty far to the point where um, his upside and his floor are like perfect in the, you know, at, at pick like 20, 21, 22, or whatever, because he's still obviously the only running back there. And it's not like someone, uh, someone left a comment saying, like, I could see McCoy fall off like DeMarco Murray kind of did. The thing was, though, the thing is, McCoy, there was no time during last year when you were watching him play that you were like, oh, McCoy looks like he's get, actually getting old and he's, he looks like he's going to fall off. That's my concern. So uh, with people being like so cautious to the point where he's falling to like 25, I think he's like an incredible value. So he was one of my butt. Like he could easily be a bust, but it depends how you look at the term, depending on where he's going. Like McCoy all the way down here, great pick. I like Freeman more just because obviously that offense is way, 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 way better. He's going to have way more scoring opportunities. 
But McCoy is going to be so involved in that passing game, right? They're going to be losing a lot. They're going to be trailing a lot. Um, they're going to be using him all the time when it comes to um, – terrible, terrible pick. Um, they're going to be using him all the time when it comes to the passing game. Uh, so his his rushing numbers, I know, like, are, are probably not going to be efficient. They were not good last year. They lost three linemen, three of their big linemen between Richie Incognito, who pulled, <laughs> pulled a fast one on the Bills. Respect to him. Um, Cordy Glenn's gone. He's to the Bengals. Uh, who else? Eric Wood, their center, retired. So three of their top linemen are gone. So that rushing game is, is going to not be good. Um, but, like, the volume is still going to be there, and he's still a very explosive player. So McCoy all the way down there is fine. The reason I took Freeman, I said, is because the offense is so good, man. Freeman all the way down here, getting him at a discount. You pr- pretty much had to pick him within the top eight or ten last year. Uh, and I know, you know, it didn't look that good, but he's still he's – still uh, found his way into the top 10 in terms of uh, points per game for fantasy running backs last year. So and that was his worst finish in the last three seasons. And um, you know, overall, he finished as I think it was RB12 or RB13. That was despite missing two games. And he had one game where he left after one or two carries. He got hurt right away. So I think much better things are to come for Freeman. Um, if he were to go back to his norm over the last three years, it'd be a much better year. He's If he's healthy for 16 games, he's a lock for 1,300 total yards and probably double-digit double, double digit scores because he did that with ease over the last two years. But since the number of games he played was less, he still ended up with, I think, eight touchdowns last year. So if, if he had played the, those three games in which he missed, I'm sure he would have hit double-digit touchdowns. So with 1,300 total yards, double-digit touchdowns as, as probably what you're going to get from him, um, I'm super happy with Freeman there. So, and, and you know, like, this is this has been me for the last two. Uh, I'll talk more about it after my pick. So my pick's coming up. I have two running backs. I have a tight end. So tight end is taken care of for the rest of the draft. So that's nice. Now I'm still, you know, with the flex spot, I would still be fine taking a running back. Joey Mixon all the way down here. You got to love that. Um, for me personally, Joey Mixon is the best, best value still on the board. I, I like a lot of these wide receivers, but I don't think any of them have the upside that Joe Mixon has. So this is something you take advantage of. Because Joey Mixon, I've seen go as early as like pick 18 to 22 in some of my draft leagues. Um, ah, I sniped him. Pick before me. Okay, so Joey Mixon's off the board. And this is, guys, this is where like tiers come into play. And I'll talk to you about that a little bit more after. Um, okay, definitely not going with a quarterback yet. Not much I see in terms of value with a running back still on the board. All right, relax over there, my guy. I'm going to go with Juju. You'll know I love Juju. I don't know why. I just I love him. He's a guy I want on every single one of my teams this year. And I'm cooling on Allen Robinson a little bit. Oh, where's my guy? Yes, yo, Sony Michelle is still creeping right here. Yeah, say what you want, bro. I'm all in on both of these guys. I feel like they, they've been on my team in every mock draft I've had so far. Okay, so Juju. I just had a comment saying uh, my top 50 overall rankings video, which just came out like yesterday. So I'll link that up top in the right if you want to go watch that. That's a pretty good one. And I had Juju in my top 50. I think he was wide receiver 15 maybe. And I didn't have Marvin Jones. Someone was like, how are you going to take uh, Juju, who's wide receiver two on his team, over Marvin Jones, who's wide receiver one in Detroit? One you know, it's not one. He's not the certified wide receiver one in Detroit. The only reason you would say that is because Golden Tate. Everyone thought Golden Tate was the outright wide receiver one, and now it's more of like a fifty-fifty split. Which, in fact, Golden Tate actually had thirteen more targets than Marvin Jones did last year. And I understand that the average depth of target is going to be much lower for a guy like Golden Tate than a Marvin Jones. But you can't outright say Marvin Jones was the wide receiver one there. They're both very heavily utilized. And Juju Smith-Schuster was, uh, in terms of targets per game. Juju and Marvin Jones were pretty much uh, identical. And that comes with the fact that Juju Smith, was, it was his first year. He was a rookie. He was averaging over six targets a game. And that was with him being a rookie. And that was with him, you know, starting off very slow. He was not involved in the offense very much uh, at the beginning of last year. They had Martavis Bryant there, obviously. So it was him getting acquainted for the first many games of the season. And then he absolutely exploded. He ended up being one of the most efficient, if not the most efficient, wide receiver in the entire NFL last year. When you look at a number of statistics, uh, quarterback rating when targeted, yards per target, yards per reception, yards after contact, all these things, like he does everything, catch percentage. He's an all-around player, so young, so uh, still develop, developing. That offense is so good. They'll never be able to double-team anyone on the outside there. 
I absolutely love Juju Smith going to this year. You know, even if, you know, you might not be comfortable with him as your wide receiver one, but when you have Le'Veon Bell, Freeman, Gronk, guys who have like RB1 and tight end one potential already at other positions, I'm absolutely fine with Juju there. Um, plus, there's so much value back here at wide receiver. Like, I love a Cooper Cup. I love Chris Hogan all the way down here. Corey Davis has tons of upside. Um, Julian Edelman, Emmanuel Sanders, all these guys I love absolutely late. So my, you know, my strategy is to grab a lot of these running backs up early. And I've, and I've talked about Sonny Michelle plenty of times. If I can get him in the fifth round, I'm ecstatic. Guys, he's going to occupy either the Deion Lewis role or the LeGarrette Blunt role of the last two years. I will gladly take either one of those in the fifth round. They picked him for, they picked him in the first round, guys. The Patriots picked him. They said, this is our biggest need. This is what we want. We want a running back, not a cornerback. They could have had um, Josh Jackson, not a cornerback. They could have had defensive linemen. They could have had linebackers. They could have had another line. Any number of picks they had, they chose to take a running back. They said, this is our biggest need. They don't, they don't think of Michelle as just a guy. He is... Good. I'm all in on I'm all in on Sony Michelle this year. So he's a guy that you could I probably could have waited on in Yahoo since he was all the way down here. I might have been able to wait until like now to take him. Who else have we got on board here? Like me some Deion Lewis here. So, you know, like I said, I'm I'm perfectly fine filling up my roster here with a ton of running backs as long as that's where I see the value going. <laughs> now come to some tougher decisions. Like I now is when I would be like, okay, Marvin Jones looks like a very good value all the way down here in the sixth round. Oh, T.Y. Hilton would have been a great pick there as well. And this is the only, uh, this is the only thing I'm like kind of regretting about taking a guy like Rob Gronkowski early. Well, I absolutely love Gronk and I think he's suit at that pick. I picked 20. That's such a value because you don't have to, um, you don't have to worry about tight end again, and he is so much better than every other player in his position. So you're getting a huge weekly advantage at the position. But now when I'm like, ah, I wish I had another receiver, like at pick 20, I could have grabbed, I forget who it was. Um, I'll talk about it in a little bit. So yeah, so now I'll gladly take, I'm going to filter this by flexes, so no quarterbacks and shit are in here. So I could see. Um Mike Jones, what are the running backs and shit we got down here? Sorry, guys, it's hard to hop on this. Marvin Jones there, definitely like that. And then I would even be okay taking Chris Hogan. Man, I love Chris Hogan. Like, I don't understand why he drops this late because mm, I still like some of the running backs on the board too. While I'm at tons of upside, but I probably wouldn't take him this early yet. Royce Freeman. Uh, I forgot a, a lot of the, this is where you could take advantage of rookies. Uh, I'm going to grab D Lou because I love him in PPR leagues. He's going to be stupidly involved here. Um, so, you know, had I, had I not taken Gronk and let me look back at who I could have gotten instead. How do I go back up? Had you not taken Gronk and this, this is always going to be the thing when you end up taking that, like had I not taken Gronk, my wide receiver one role could be filled or even my flex could be filled with a, Olashawn McCoy, a jerk McKinnon. And then I could have, um, instead of taking Sonny Michelle there, a fifth round wide receiver, and then still gotten guys like, like Greg Olson still on the board, Evan Ingram still on the board. Um, so people do a lot of late round tight ends. So that's the thing about taking a Gronk. Like, while it's great to have that, it's not always the, you know, the best move because of how late other guys go. So instead of taking Gronk there, I could have had Adam Thielen as my wide receiver one, Doug Baldwin as my wide receiver one, guys I really like. And then that's, you know, Devonta Freeman, Le'Veon Bell, and then like um, Doug Baldwin and Juju Smith-Schuster. Like that's a great RB1, RB2, wide receiver one, wide receiver two. And then still have like, I'd be perfectly happy with Greg Olson as my starting tight end, you know? So that's that's like the the decision you have to weigh. And I think that that comes down to your team. Like if you know your draft, like especially if you're drafting with your friends or family or something like that historically is it late round tight ends like if you guys are in more of a savvy league you'll probably see tight ends being weighted on more and if you're in a league like that then i would say it's okay to skip over gronk because you'll be able to get value later my favorite value at tight end right now is probably delaney walker because he's still still going all the way down here Did chris hogan get picked yep he was the pick after Deion lewis so chris hogan the reason i'm so high on chris hogan so guys like last year they basically had two outside wide receivers, right? It was Chris Hogan, Brandon Cooks. Those are the guys getting the deep balls, the deeper passes. 
Brandon Cooks is gone now. Chris Hogan's like the only one there that get that plays the outside effectively. Um, say what you want about Malcolm Mitchell. We haven't seen him do shit in the NFL besides make a few good plays. Say what you want about Jordan Matthews, but he is not an, an effective outside receiver, right? He's a slot guy. So the way I look at it, Chris Hogan's going to get a huge portion of those deep balls. Tom Brady is always throwing the ball deep. He's one of the most um, voluminous. Is that a word? The most high volume deep passers in the NFL. I and mean, you can look at it from player profile under the dot, dot com. Bring up some statistics for your ways. Also in my draft guide, I was putting together, I was working on my top fantasy resources, like top the best websites for you guys to do research and look at. And I did a video with my top five, which I'll link up there and, and down in the description. But in the uh, in the draft guide, I think I have like 15 of them that are all awesome. So last year, deep ball attempts, number three, protection rate, number one. And they brought in a first round lineman, air yards, number one, pass attempt distance, number one. Deep ball percentage, deep ball completion percentage, number four, air yards per attempt, number three, adjusted yards per attempt. Guys, like he is a huge deep ball thrower. He's not just efficient and accurate, but he t- takes a ton of those shots. And Chris Hogan is the guy there. I'm shocked that he's going this low. Chris Hogan is such a value. If you can, I, I, I probably should have taken him over Deion Lewis, to be honest with you, but I had to show respect to D God. Okay, now we're getting down here. Um, I do not have a quarterback yet. Let's see who's still on the board. The fact that there are just so many quarterbacks to choose from is like how, like why take a quarterback now when I could just wait and take Ben, big Ben, Matt Ryan, even like Marcus Mariota with the new coaching staff that should be much more high tempo offense, like in 17 rounds. So I'm not really worried about taking a QB right now. This is when I'd be looking at. I have most of my roster kind of filled up. Okay. Um, I, I'm just basically looking at value, guys I really love right now. And it would be guys like Cooper Cup. I love Rex Burkhead. Kind of like CJ Anderson down here, too, as a value, to be honest. Like Aaron Jones. I think you can look at your team and see what you need. Do you need upside? Do you need depth? Royce Freeman, I like a lot here. Three Cohen. I think I would probably go with Royce Freeman all the way down here. He's a guy I expect to kind of go into like the sixth round. Oh, I have two picks in a row. That's right. Like the sixth round when it comes to uh, drafts later in the summer. I hate Devin Funches where this is. I kind of like uh, Sammy Watkins is growing on me a little bit. I know there's a lot of mouths to feed there and a lot of weapons, but they are moving into like an entirely spread offense. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with Sammy here. In the ninth round, I don't hate that. So, Sammy Watkins, I've been listening to a lot of pods lately, and Evan Silva's been going nuts about, not Sammy Watkins in particular, but this, uh, I think he's been talking about the Kansas City offense. So, they have, um, Andy Reid came out and said they're going to be using a lot more spread offense this year, and that's what Patrick Mahomes used in college. Uh, They also, I think their offensive coordinator is from Oregon, so he was obviously implementing the spread offense there. So, they're going to do a lot of wide receiver sets that are, you know, spread and that that's good for wide receivers in case you didn't understand that which is great for wide receivers actually not it's actually a hit for a guy like Kareem Hunt because in spread offenses you use a lot of two running back sets so you'll have multiple guys on the field at once which means he won't be capitalizing on all the all the passing downs and stuff like that but it's neither here nor there so Sammy Watkins I mean just, I'm not a guy who uses this as analysis really but when you look at the type of money he got it was huge I think he's got to be like the fifth or sixth highest paid wide receiver in the NFL, right? I'm actually going to check that out. Here's another good resource for you guys. SpotTrack.com looks at contracts. Um, Let's see, top salaries. Let's go to wide receivers. I don't know, 48 mil. So it's 11th highest paid. Um. Still very high up there, and clearly they want to use him in this offense, right? I feel like, for the most part, yeah, it's a great real-life move, of course, anytime you can get a talent like Sammy Watkins, but, like, you don't pay that kind of money just to get a, a good real-life move on your roster, right? You're definitely going to be utilizing the guy. He's going to take a ton of deep shots. Saw how effective he was with him and Tyrod Taylor that one year. So I like Sammy all the way down here. I think he's a guy that, at worst, you know, if, if Sony Michelle doesn't work out, you're probably comfortable throwing, you know, obviously, have Deion Lewis, Royce Freeman, uh, but Sammy Watkins in the flex is fine. I actually feel like my team is stacked right now, to be honest. 
So Royce Freeman, another guy that uh, is kind of controversial because we don't know what's going to happen in that Denver backfield. I think people are writing off Devonta Booker pretty quickly, but that backfield has the most opportunity available um, coming into this year, right? Jamal Charles is not there anymore. CJ Anderson is not there anymore. They have like 350 touches available. And that's counting what Devontae Booker had last year already. So you can give him 100 touches and Royce Freeman can get 250. And I think at 250 touches, like you'll love that, getting that in round eight. So um, another really interesting stat I saw yesterday, which was uh, probably going to be my wild stat Wednesday on Instagram next week. Denver Broncos ran the second most offensive plays in the entire NFL last year. I was shocked because it was teams like the Patriots. It was teams like the Eagles, um, teams like that. And then Denver somehow just snuck in there kind of, um, which was crazy to me because obviously their offense wasn't good. Their team wasn't good, but they ran a lot of plays. So I got to, I kind of got to dive in on that and, and think why, why, why though? Um, so that's, that's actually a, a candidate for aggression on why maybe the opportunity is not that big there, but all right. So, we got a lot of running backs pretty much on the roster right now. We got five. Um, Matthew Stafford is my favorite quarterback in in terms of late later round quarterbacks. So I think I'm going to grab Matthew Stafford with one of these picks. So I'm going to do that now so the time doesn't come out. And I said I was going to wait, but Matt Stafford is a guy who I actually have like a tier ahead of all the other late round uh, guys. Um, who else we got here? Who else we got here? So I have the two running backs start, Aaron Jones and Tariq Cohen. I think what I'm going to do here is take Corey Davis because I have a lot of running backs already on the roster and I need some more depth at wide receiver. So Corey Davis is a guy who, um, you know, obviously he was a top, I think he was the number six pick overall in the draft. He came into the year with an injury. Anytime, this is something to look out for, guys. When people get hurt in the preseason, um, when people have like hamstring injuries, especially calf injuries, any of these things, they tend to linger and they're not a good sign for players. We saw it with Corey Davis. We saw it with DeMarco Murray. We see it countless times. So guys who get those in training camp um, or close to the season, be very, very, very wary of taking them, um, you know, even, to even taking them at their at their ADP. Uh, I would wait a couple more rounds. If if they don't go, then maybe take the chance on them. But I like Corey Davis coming into this year as, uh, as their wide receiver one. I do like Rashard Matthews a lot, but getting Corey Davis in round 11 or whatever, is uh, I, I think it's really good value considering the upside that he has. Like I said, they brought in a whole, they overhauled their their coaching staff, and I think it's going to be a lot more up tempo. I think Mariota is going to throw the ball a lot more. Um, I think he's a very good candidate to have like a a semi breakout year, right? And his his touchdown percentage over the last uh, his first two years was really high. Um, I think Evan Silva said it was like five and a half, which only um, which is right around where like Tom Brady is. And then last year it dipped all the way down to like 2.6 or something, right? He had a terrible year last year. So you'd expect that if not to go back up to where it was at least um, way higher than it was last year, which was awful for him. It was just a, a bad year for the the Titans, right? They had a, a, a down year. So expect Corey Davis to kind of bounce back, um, occupy that wide receiver one role and uh, you know, a good amount of targets there with plenty of upside. Cause he's a, he's a technician. He's a guy who can, can definitely run the deep routes and, and make the tough catches and stuff. Like he flashed last year. He had a lot of really nice plays, um, but he's also a guy who you can throw to like at any part of the field. So I, I like to see what Corey Davis brings this year, coming into the year fully healthy without that hamstring injury. Roy. Okay, so we have um, most of our starting roster filled out. Two more roster spots. Um, and, you know, the good thing about getting guys like Stafford or Gronk is you don't really have to take backups. So if, you know, if you are doing a late round quarterback and you go with like a Jameis Winston or a Marcus Mariota or even like an Andrew Luck, if you want to chance it on that, you should probably pair it up with uh, with the second late round quarterback because you're not going to hit on all of them, obviously. Um, that's just my two my two saints. My two saints. And Gronk, I mean, you could take a backup tight end, but I'd rather not waste a roster spot on the second tight end. I'd rather take skill players, especially at this point in the summer. Mm -hmm. Don't like Isaiah. I know, like, Duke Johnson was really good last year. I, I don't know. There's just something about Duke Johnson that makes me never, ever want to take, take him. I just don't like the, the weekly the weekly unknown, the uncertainty. What else we got? I really do like Tariq Cohen. Devonta Parker, I like too, especially down. I mean, down here, guys, it's the 12th round already. 
So it's not like you're wasting a lot of draft capital on anyone. Nick Chubb's a guy I would like to take him uh, in a, in the late round of a lot of my drafts because the way the way I look at Nick Chubb is um, he's not going to make a big impact in the beginning of the year. I don't think he's going to outright steal the starting job and get anywhere more than like ten to twelve carries a game. But he, I think he's a lot more talented than Carlos Hyde, and I do like Carlos Hyde, but I think Nick Chubb's a very 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 good running back. So Chubb's a guy who over the second half of the year might. Um, maybe win fantasy leagues for you. Not win fantasy leagues, but he could absolutely be like a really good flex, maybe even an RB2. So if you can get him this late in the draft, I'm absolutely ecstatic taking him down here because he's a guy you can just kind of sit on and let him marinate on the bench. So I'll take Chubb here. The other guy I'm going to take here, now yeah, I already know who I'm taking, is Randall Cobb. And I want to show you guys this stat I pulled yesterday for my Instagram Again, if you're not following me on the glam, I would do that. I mean, you can follow me on my personal gram if you want, nickercolano.bdge. But I got a um, fancy football account. I do a wild stat Wednesday every Wednesday, along with some other stuff. But here was a stat I pulled up yesterday. I looked at since Aaron Rodgers became the starting quarterback for Green Bay and going back to 2008. And 2013 and 17 are both excluded because he was hurt both those years and he only played like nine or seven games, whatever. And I looked at the fantasy wide receiver two on those teams. So the guy, not just like who people thought was going to be the wide receiver two, but the person who finished as the wide receiver two, right? The end of the year who had the second highest fantasy points at the wide receiver position. These are that wide receiver two's averages with Aaron Rodgers. 104.5 targets, 70 receptions, almost 1,000 receiving yards, and almost eight touchdowns. 70 for 1,000 and eight touchdowns is the average wide receiver two finish. And if you look over just the last... Five years, if you discount the first three years, look at these numbers. This is the average of this is probably over a thousand and around 10 touchdowns, which is even better because that's probably the Aaron Rodgers you can expect. So, my thoughts on Cobb is yes, he is uh, a great sleeper, but it's not so much Cobb himself, it is whoever winds up as that wide receiver two role. And I think. This is one of the most, I think I'm going to do a video on the top five most intriguing storylines heading into training camp. So if you want to see that video, make sure you leave a comment down below and hit a thumbs up. So I know y'all want to see that. This is one of my most, this might be the most intriguing storyline of the summer. Uh, who is going to be the wide receiver two and three in Green Bay? And I know everyone kind of just slips it in that Cobb is the definite guy there. The way I'm thinking about this, and I've said this before, is just like that Green Bay offense clearly needs some kind of shakeup. Uh, I don't think they could just be stagnant and expect everything to be fine when it comes down to it with, you know, what they have. So I think they're going to go into camp with Devonta Adams as a clear one. But I think between Cobb, Geronimo Allison, uh, Jamal Moore, even Equinemius St. Brown, uh, the other rookie that they drafted, between all the rookie wide receivers, I really think it's going to be a camp battle. I don't think anyone is is guaranteed that wide receiver two role, especially Cobb. Of course, he's the front runner right now, and he, there's a good chance that he wins that. But um I just don't think that it's going to be given to him. So Cobb's a guy that, yeah, I love taking down here because if he wins that role, he's he's going to be a very big piece of this offense. But, you know, he hasn't been good in a long time. So there's no reason to just assume that he's going to be really good and going to put up wide receiver two numbers. That's just my thoughts on that. So that's a, a camp battle to pay very, very, very close attention to. And when we get to the last two picks, I do not have a kicker. I do not have a defense. Um and I'm not going to take one, and I'll explain why in a second. I'm also working on a video. I'm working on videos for quarterback, kicker, and not kicker, uh, quarterback and, and defense. I'm looking at the early season schedules, and I'm going to go into who are the best streaming quarterbacks. So, like, who are the guys, if you're, a, if you're a streamer, right, if you take a quarterback and you don't really, like, you'll drop them and pick up someone else. Um, I'm looking at the early season schedules, like week one and two in particular, and seeing guys you want to pick. Because, you know, while I love Patrick Mahomes, his his season, his schedule to start off is very, very difficult. So I'd rather take someone else there. Um, the last couple rounds, I'll take a guy like Jamal Williams, who has crazy upside. If, oh, no, they're not even going to let me draft it. Oh, because mm, Miller. Love me some A. Miller. I wonder if they'll let me take another. They're not going to. I would take Corey Clement here 20 out of 20 times. I probably would have taken him earlier if I knew. Okay, they automatically took a tight end for me. But um, why I don't take kicker or defense? Oh, no, they took Kansas City for me. So if you're drafting if you're drafting anywhere prior to, like, right before the season starts off, I would suggest not taking your kicker or defense. 
The reason being is because there's still time before the season for injuries to happen. So take a skill player, take running backs. I, you know, that's uh, injury injuries to starting running backs are a lot more valuable to the running backs behind them on the depth chart than wide receivers. So say you take a Corey Clement in the last round instead of a defense, right? And then, uh, you know, in the last two weeks of the preseason, J.H.I.E. gets hurt. Corey Clement's value just went from a 13th round pick to a third round pick, probably maybe even higher than that. So there's no reason to stash a defense when you could stash Corey Clement, when you could stash a guy like Devonta Booker in case Roy Freeman gets hurt, when you could stash uh, Blau Powell in case Isaiah Crowell gets hurt, something like that. You know what I mean? So these late round picks do that. If, if there's still preseason games left, if there's still, that's kind of the gist here. But if you're drafting in like July or mid August, even I would definitely not even take kicker or defense. And then right before the season kicks off, then drop two of the players that you know are just those least valuable players and then pick up your defense or, or a kicker. Um, and that's kind of my tidbit on that. But I, I always draft like two days before the season starts, so I'm never actually able to do that. But I would definitely suggest people drafting earlier in the summer do that because injuries occur throughout August. Injuries occur in the last week of the season, the last week of practice, whatever. We see guys go down from non-contact injuries all the time. So um, that's how I would do that. As for the rest of the team, um, I mean, I, I, I'm ecstatic about this team right here. I think this is a really, really solid squad. I think if I could go back and do it again, I would have taken a wide receiver uh, at pick 20 or 21 instead of Gronk here so that my wide receiver base is a little more solidified than Juju and Marvin Jones. And I like both of them for sure, but could have been stronger there. And then taken um, instead of in the sixth round, Deion Lewis, I could have taken uh, Greg Olson there and had Greg Olson in the tight end spot and been very, very comfortable with that. And it would have looked like, you know, Staff, um, Adam Thielen and J- Juju, Le'Veon Bell, Devonta Freeman, Greg Olson. And then I would have been able to pick between Marvin Jones, Sonny Michelle, Royce Freeman, Sammy Watkins at Flex. But overall, I absolutely love this team. And these are the kind of teams you're going to build up when you play on Yahoo. Uh, the other thing about Yahoo is now is like you actually can take advantage of these ADPs because you can play in pro leagues. So they have pro leagues where a lot of you guys look for leagues. You're like, oh, I can't find any good leagues to play in. They have cash leagues on Yahoo that you could actually play against other people, right? And they have different buy-ins. So you have $20 buy-in, $50, $100, all the way up to $1,000, and you're playing against other people. Um, So you could join these and take advantage of the rankings or the ADP. That being said, obviously, the people who are playing in these leagues now also are probably, you know, better than the average fantasy guy who doesn't look at it now. But it's cool because, you know, $20, boom, they have drafts open tomorrow. I might... This I might do one of these, like a fifty or hundred dollar buy in, as one of my next mock drafts. So it's not actually a mock draft; it's a real live draft for money. Um, but that might be one of the pieces of content I do, maybe like next Friday or the Friday after that for one of my mock drafts. So that's going to wrap it up, though. This is the final team on the right here. Um, wow, I talked throughout that entire video. I'm impressed by myself. It's probably because all the caffeine in the poop cup. If you enjoyed, please drop a thumbs up below. Uh, greatly appreciated as the YouTube space is getting more saturated with fantasy football peoples. Still trying to take the throne. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We're going to be coming out with videos like this all summer leading up to yo draft and into the season, of course. So make sure you uh, pre-order the draft guide, which is it has so much good stuff in there, guys. I'm telling you, you will not be disappointed. Get it at a discount now. Price will go up on July 1st. I expect that to be out July 8th or 9th. You're not receiving a physical copy for any of you guys that have bought it thus far. It is completely digital, interactive, mobile, tablet, laptop. You will be getting emails with updates um, weekly on the on the guide. So don't fret until like July 8th or 9th. That's when it will release. You will not be getting anything prior to then. But um, that's it. So thumbs up the video if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you all. On Sunday for the live stream, make sure you put notifications on on the YouTube channel. And uh, if you're listening to this via podcast, make sure you uh, give it a five-star ratings and leave me a goddamn review. Love you. Bye.